What is going on? I'm Zedmont. Now, yesterday's video was a complete and utter dumpster fire. Thank you for your patience, all of you who went through that. I just upgraded to Windows 11 and new capture card, new dock, all sorts of stuff. Just trying to fix PC problems on my end. And uh, audio yesterday was just absolutely awful. So it should be better today. I've done a bunch of tweaks and edits and actually paid a bit more attention. What we are going to do is quickly catch up on the news. So Base Builder is shutting down. A lot of you know that. Today there was a huge problem where people were kicked out of their task forces. They couldn't get into the game. All of that has been fixed. This is the third AWS outage in less than a month or so. Now, for those of you who don't know what AWS is, AWS is Amazon's cloud infrastructure. Supercell does not run their own servers. They, they run the software for their own servers. They don't run the hardware, and that allows them to do things like easily scale to all the people and do some amazing, amazing stuff. Um, it also allows you to have a server super close by you without them having to physically ship a server there and set it up. And great, 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 great things. But it also means that when AWS has an outage, then there's nothing Supercell can do about it. Now, there are some tricks they can do to make things a little bit better as far as having extra regions and all that sort of fun stuff, but costs and time and not always possible. And I say that because it is literally part of my job to do things like that. So for those of you who don't know me, no, I don't. <laughs> YouTube is not, sorry, that made me laugh. Um, YouTube is not my full-time job. I do get a little bit of extra spending dollars from it, most, most definitely, but it is not my full-time job. It is not, I do not make nearly enough money to go full-time on the YouTube. And also, it's not really my, it's actually, it's not, it's not my goal to do so. So, um, this is something that's just a hobby for me. I do this because I have a lot of fun. I've learned a ton from YouTube, whether it be thumbnail creation or audio um, quality or video editing, small, small little details, trying to use YouTube as a learning platform. Also, public speaking, all sorts of good stuff like that. I look, I listen back on my old videos and they definitely, definitely make me cringe. So for those of you who have been with me over the years, Hopefully you've noticed something as far as quality getting slowly better. Maybe you haven't because it started out like not HD and now we're HD. It's just the sign of the times. Anyways, um, now that we've done our preamble about AWS, do consider going over into your Creator Boost as it covers up the text there. I hate how it does that. It drives me absolutely batty. We're going to put Zedmot in our Creator Code. I've said this once. I've said it a thousand times. Don't care if you put my code, obviously I prefer it, but please consider putting someone's code in there. Now, we are going to get some attacks going, and we are going to be using the Barrage Tribe, and the Medic Healing Tribe, and the Grenadier Tribe. That first attack, my brain was somewhere else, not fully, fully engaged. Now, Grenadiers, I talked about this in yesterday's video, but you probably couldn't hear me because of the audio problems. Grenadiers were the best map clearing troop for quite a while there. And I know some people will disagree with me and I'm okay with that, but for a long, long time there, they were, if not the best way to clear your map, in the top three. And I know um, also our friends, the Warriors are up there as well, but to be honest, you couldn't beat these guys. You could clear 99% of bases without losing any troops. Bombardiers kind of made them a little bit irrelevant, which is a little bit sad, but that's just the sign of the times. Bombardiers made a lot of different troops irrelevant, to be completely honest. Now, uh, we are going to get the heck... Oh, I mean, and the reason for that is because, as you saw there, these dudes like to bunch up close to sniper towers, and sniper towers can kill them, cannons can even kill them. So Grenadiers definitely, definitely need a little bit of wrangling. So you need to be a little bit careful, uh, way, way more careful than you have to be with Bombardiers, for example. So we're just going to send our dudes over into here, and then as soon as that... Um, rocket launcher right there goes down. We are going to throw another hack out, and that's hopefully going to take 
care of that left-hand side shock launcher. And now we can just cruise on into the headquarters slowly but surely. One other thing I should mention, I suppose, is that Grenadiers also do friendly fire. So lots and lots of strikes against them. And I know as soon as people unlock Grenadiers, they just go, these guys suck. They don't do much damage. They miss all the time. I assure you, though, please, please give them a shot, especially if you're a low level. I know you don't get Bombardiers until, like, what is that, HQ-19, HQ-20, something like that. So do give Grenadiers a shot. They are very, very, very worthwhile. Um, look at this. Look how much damage they're going to do behind the core. They are going to remove all those buildings. You're going to get extra gunboat energy. Uh, I'm probably preaching to the choir on this one, but we just took down a base that only has one ice, to be fair. To be fair. Um little bit of a letter Kenny reference there and what we are gonna do is I'm gonna try and save some gunboat energy and barrage all my troops it is Christmas so I am gonna be given Intel and diamonds to all the people as long as I keep some troops alive so just wanted to keep all my troops alive on that one just to show you that yes indeed grenadiers are very very viable um, this person only has 95,000 gold. So right now, being the fact that it is all troop mania, I look in here, you'll see all troops are 90% off. Now, that does not correspond with the armory, by the way. We are going to find new opponent on this person. And very, very likely this person's going to have a lot more gold. Look at that, 518,000 gold. If you're looking to do any kind of armory upgrade, do it right now before the Mega Crab, because everyone is going to have so much gold, it's going to be utterly and completely ridiculous. Just absolutely insane the amount of gold that's going to be out there. We're going to drop one there, and then we'll just bring all of our dudes over into here, throwing a shock on that mortar, because otherwise that mortar is going to be dropping bombs on our grenadiers. Now, I do have troop health, and troop health drastically, drastically, drastically helps with Grenadiers. It means that you can get hit by a mortar or a sniper and not lose troops, which is fantastically amazing. I just need to get my shock out in the right spot. And then here we go. And that is why right there, I like to use the, um, what is that called? Universal Remote with my Grenadiers. I find that using Universal Remote is amazingly great. Let's throw one more smoke in there. We've already lost one Grenadier. Of course we have. And we're going to throw an artillery right there. And then we should be easy peasy at this point. There's basically nothing that can reach us except for those rocket launchers. And oh, their rocket launchers actually did enough damage to kill one of my Grenadiers. I'm a little bit surprised by that. The fact that they've, I guess, four rocket launchers likely change things for the worse, or for the better for defenses, I suppose. But, um, Typically, with Grenadiers, wouldn't have to deal with rocket launchers, or wouldn't have to worry about rocket launchers, I should say. So, this is my first time using Grenadiers since their fourth rocket launcher has come around, and uh, it seems to me that me making Grenadiers even less viable, which is a little bit unfortunate, but that's only going to be HQ-24, I suppose. Is that when you get the extra rocket launcher? don't know off the top of my head. These kind of details have started to sift away. We are saving that final barrage for this barrage right about here. Boom, shakalaka. Need to kill some grenadiers. Given intel and diamonds to all of the opponents, and I know some of you are shaking your heads right now, but we've got 496,000. Wasn't there more gold? I swear that was 500 and something. Oh, is the math broken? Or is my brain broken? I know I said things were slipping away, but we're going to check that because maybe that's after the attack gold. Let's have a quick look here. I feel like I just had like a cat, the matrix moment. So we are going to find new opponent on this person just to get a bit more gold out of them. Robert's coming in with some extra gold, aren't you, Robert? Nope, about the same. 391. Let's see if we're going to get 371. Or if we're going to get 391. I feel like I've just totally and utterly missed something. So we are going to go like about this. We're going to drop Everspark here. She's going to hack there. And then we're going to drop all these dudes. And that boom cannon's hopefully going to remove some buildings for us. Making things slightly, slightly easier. And then we'll just cruise through this. And I'm very curious to see this four rocket launcher thing. I have not paid any attention to rocket launchers with Gren Medic in a long, long time. So this fourth rocket launcher is making me a little bit curious if I need to reconsider my Gren Med. Now, you should... 
I uh, there's a debate along among the Gred Med people that says should you use Mr. Bullet or should you use Everspark? Personally, I find that Everspark is far far easier. And what Everspark does is she just allows all of those critter distractions, makes things a little, and your medics stay back. If you're gonna use um, Mr. Bullet, then your medics are gonna move forwards and follow Bullet, which means that your grenadiers don't get quite as much healing. So that is the debate. Um, I would love to hear which troops you guys like to use. Oh, we're about to get absolutely wrecked by that Shock Blaster. Right about now, watch this. Shock Blaster hitting all of our Grenadiers, but so far it hasn't killed any. Has not yet killed any, but in comes the Boom Cannon, and we are about to lose a bunch of either Medics or Grenadiers. Not super clean on my part, but still, I gotta say, I love using these troops. now. If you ever come across a red line or a rogue, those are the two primary, primary bases for Grenadiers. Let's throw a barrage right there. Um, also, Disassembler is a great, great time. I believe it's Disassembler. I always get that one mixed up because um, is Disassembler the one with the two shock launchers on the left or is it with all the four of the shield gens on the left with the rockets on the right? Um, Someone please correct me if I'm saying the wrong base, but I'm talking about the one with all the shields on the left-hand side. You can get a Grenadier solo there. Also, Grenadier solo on Tapir, a great, great time. If you have another base that you like to use Grenadiers on, please do hit me up in the comments because um, I love... Like, you guys know me by this point. I love using Zookas and all, but it's very, very fun to get solos with different troops, whether it be all rifles or... Grenadiers or some other troop. We are going to do a quick switch up here. Um, we're going to put a different troop combo in. Let's get going with some warriors. Just trying to do different things at the moment. Um, that base builder going away is a, definitely a sad moment for me. I didn't use it a ton, but it just is not a great sign for Boom Beach. And the way that I took that base builder going away was that my thinking is that that means they're not going to be putting any more NPCs that people built into the game. I, I don't think it was used a heck of a lot. Um, it's one of those things that my hopes and dreams were that they would start to bring in um, operation bases so that you could actually design a little bit more things in the game. We could help move things forward, but it just never happened. So definitely sad sad moment there but i think we all saw that coming for a little while at this point so i am going up this sideline if you're asking why i don't really have any sort of reason at this point and then we're going to go one two three like that and if you're wondering why my smokes are backwards it's because i want brick to come out of smoke last that way brick is going to hide back there we're going to throw some critters about here and then no smokes no shocks just getting all of the damage right about now as all of the headquarters just gets pummeled by our warriors not the fastest path but you can see they had lots of hidden mines and i don't scout so going up the side is that a green idol over there max those troops those trophies are awful as we get a crash i feel like Brick and her battle orders is causing a lot of these crashes. If the battle ends when battle orders is active, it seems like your operation attack crashes or your PvP attack crashes. We did not give Max any intel or diamonds, which is a little bit unfortunate, but didn't have any gunboat energy left because we went round the outside, as Mr. Eminem once said. We are going to clear all of these mines, and then how are we going to get up there? I'm going to do a side drop using warriors. Um, not the best approach, but um, we're going to go something like that, hoping to get brick underneath that smoke, getting all of our dudes underneath that smoke. Let's throw an artillery there. One, two, three, throwing one more flare to get brick next to the headquarters. This is why I don't use brick with warriors very often, because I make mistakes with my smokes, much like that one right there. I'm just going to use one critter right there for distraction, battle orders, and then we'll throw a barrage on top of all of our warriors, given top men all of the intel and all of the diamonds. If we get all the troops, they're guaranteed two intel, and I think they get somewhere in the neighborhood of three to five diamonds. Another crash. Again, I'm going to get rid of brick because I can't handle this thing happening. You know what? Let's use a different troop loadout. Um, 
I will be bringing out a sneak peek in the next little bit. And that sneak peek is hopefully going to be for the Mega Crab. So Mega Crab coming in one day, 14 hours. I wish we could do our sneak peeks a little bit earlier to give you guys a little bit of extra time to digest and plan and stuff like that. But it is what it is, as they say. So Black Jack Geary... I've by the way, I totally forgot to check to see how much gold we were getting. <laughs> Hopefully, one of you guys paid attention. Um, we're gonna we're gonna reload Blackjack Gary, but first we're gonna drop a couple boat Suzukas in there. Uh, Should have done that for other people, but like I said, getting the intel and the diamonds in that Christmas giving spirit. We've got way way all the gold, so great time to do it. Let's find a new opponent with a bit more gold. What have you got for us, Sash? 348. Let's see what we can get. Um, I I feel like this is I feel like I have a bit of egg on my face right now. I feel like this is something that I should know the answer to, but brain just not working at the moment. So a 348 was the number. If you're wondering why I'm using Zookas, this is how I drop all of my troops and then force close the game. This way you're guaranteed to be able to drop all your troops. And if you're wondering why I have uh, Shock Knuckles, it's because it gets bullet slightly out front. Zookas do a little bit of damage in behind. I don't have enough GBE statues to drop all of my Scorchers. And just force closing just makes this far easier to save a little bit of gunboat energy. There comes the Shock Knuckles, shocking our own... Actually, didn't shock our own troops. Barraging our own troops, though. 348 was the gold. Are we going to get 328, I kind of assume? Let's have a look here. What do we have here? Weird. Something's not right here. I feel like gold is not coming through in the proper way. That is not 20,000 less. That is 15,000 less or so. If you have an explanation, please hit me up in the comments. Otherwise, maybe it's a glitch, maybe it's a bug, maybe I should have known this and I've already forgotten. Um, Christmas music in the background. We're going to do one more attack, then I'm going to call it a day. Hopefully, Santa is good to all of you. Hoping Santa is good to me as well, but um, anyways, moving on on forwards with the shock knuckles. Look at that shock knuckle. Managed to get both shock launchers. That is absolutely amazing. I know shock knuckles is not the best of abilities, but if you're using energy drink, he just kind of hangs out behind. So either use taunt or shock knuckles with scorchers is my go-to. Or you just use Kavan and just hang out in behind. But look how useful this Scorcher Zuka troop combo is. All of the Zukas still alive, all of the Scorchers, and we're just going to barrage all of our troops, throw an art all of our artillery on top of that Scorcher. Boom, shaka laka, down goes the troops. That is going to be all for me, folks. I will continue to barrage my troops. If you happen to see my name show up, please let me know in the comments. There's nothing better than giving intel and diamonds than getting a message back on Facebook or on Discord or on Twitter or YouTube comments just saying, hey, thank you, because that just makes all of it worthwhile. So... Mega Crab coming. Season 30 XXX is coming. Otherwise, that is all for me. I will be offline a little bit due to Christmas and traveling and in-laws and all that sort of stuff. So do hit me up in the comments. Stay in touch on my Twitter. Like it says down in that bottom left-hand corner, at the Zedmot. I shall talk to you soon. Thanks for coming in. I'm Zedmot. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Peace.